Hello, today I thought we'd have some fun with some really intense bright colours. Um, doing a goldfish in a pond, using the wax and the ink as well as some powerful watercolours. Um, the colour I'm going to use is ultramarine blue and viridian green for this um, painting. Okay, I'm just going to move the original. Put that there while we paint. Again, I'm saying draw out yourself a line so you've got something to work within and also draw it so it'll <clears throat> your frame will sit nicely above when you've finished your painting it always helps to offer a frame up to your painting it always makes it look so much better i don't know what the science is but it always does okay then i'm going to start drawing with um, an orange watercolor pencil um, this time it's one of my old Caran Dash ones I've had for a very long time and because <clears throat> it'll blend in when I start the watercolour I've not got to worry about rubbing marks out on the nice watercolour paper. So I'm going to have a look at the composition here. I'm thinking where would I like the fish's head to finish. I think I'm going to put a little mark there and then I'm thinking about the tail. How much room do I want above the tail? This bit here. Um, it always helps with your drawing. If you can just mark out where you want your um, subject. So I'm just going to put a little mark there. So happens oh, such a lot that people um, start drawing, they do a beautiful drawing, and then they run out of paper. I think, oh, so sad. Mind you, we get round it, we start cropping it differently and everything but it's I think you enjoy your painting so much better if you've got a plan you don't feel quite so anxious so we've got that bit and that bit and I'm just checking the angle so that's flipped over a bit more there but it'll do it's good enough for what we want to do okay the next thing I'm going to look at is that line there <coughs> excuse me and how that comes round so I'm thinking of the body of the fish coming down and just put a little mark there. And so that's enough. It's a bit like doing dot to dot. Um, I know things sound very simple when you explain, but it is. So I always encourage people to use the arc of your arm to draw. If you need to turn anything round, do it. Don't work against the flow use everything you can to help you so I'm just doing a very loose curve of the fish swimming round what I love about um, the fish and that I mean we've had carp before years ago and they grew massive and th this part here was so powerful uh, I just like to get the power of um, the fish so and this is quite a nice simple shape this is goldfish obviously and then I'm just going to bring it round into the tail and basically that's all the real observational drawing I'm going to do on this goldfish you've got a flattish sort of bit here fins coming off here and here oops excuse me wobbling the camera eyes there and that's good enough, isn't it? It's simplified fish. Um, now, for the tail, I know there's a lot of fancy species out there, but we can have a bit of fun playing, being creative. You can have it flaring out. So, we've got the main <coughs> image. We've got it where we want, within the composition. And now I'm just going to use the Parker pen with the quink black quink ink and do some just a bit of fun play loosen up there we are there's that power it's powering round in the pond our oh, fish were terrible weather the frog spawn they used to eat all of it so we've got that lovely bit there that lovely mouth that carp have indicate where the eyes are okay 
There isn't going to be a lot of ink work on here. It's mainly to do with the bright colours of the wax and the watercolour here. Okay, all right, making a decision on the tail. Well, we'll have a main bit and then we'll have some fun. Just playing. And then I'm looking at this main bit here. You can, if you want, indicate some scales. They have rather big scales on top. Just to draw attention to the centre. And basically, I think that's enough. <clears throat> You've got the image, you captured the movement. There's no need to overwork. Um, so... I've got my pack of 24 Crayola crayons that you get from any supermarket or stationers. Um, and the colours I've chosen are orange, scarlet, and I think that's a red orange, but I broke the end off. But you will find one in the pack. Okay, because we've got the light hitting it there, and then as the fish, the rounded part of the fish goes deeper into the water, I'm going to use a darker colour. So, what we can do is draw in with the wax crayon. Now remember, we are working on a nice Buckingford paper um, knot. That means it's the one that's got a nice rough edge, I mean surface. So I'm just going to get those a bit, just accentuate to bring your attention to these bits once we start applying the strong colours. Um, and so we have a lovely texture that appears once we start wetting the ink and putting the watercolours in. So that gives a bit more texture to what you're working with. I'm just going to intensify. Now wax is a nice thing to experiment with because if you put it on really strong here, it's really going to sing out once you apply your colours. Um, if you use it more delicately, you get a lot more water going to the, um, I mean colour going to the texture. And um, what happens here is you get a more of a subtle texture there instead of a really strong block of colour. So it, it's nice fun to play with. Also, with wax crayons, you can blend the colours. Um, being as I have been doing this for over 43 years, maybe 46, I can't remember. I've got paintings I did then and the wax does keep its colour. So that's that's nice recommendation. As for the Parker Quink, the Parker Quink, um, I would say it's as... Um, some of the more fugitive watercolours you get, you may go a little fading, but you don't tend to hang watercolours in bright sunlight anyway. So, just going to do a few dots about. And I'm just flowing into that. Right here, yeah, um, I'll put some scarlet in now. see how using the colours you kind of get in a 3D effect, you get in the roundness of the fish. It's like getting perspective with colour rather than just line. Uh, let's try some of this red orange, oh that's a beautiful colour. Yeah, we'll have that strong line cutting through the, um, the water. Really strong there, we want those showing up more. The thing I do like about working in this technique is that it's very forgiving. It allows people to play. Um, I do like to teach good observational drawing, so you've got a good base to work from. And then once you've got that, you can free up with your creativity. I just, I just really enjoy teaching this. I go all over the country doing the workshops. And I just love seeing the response and what people create. They're quite surprised by what they can achieve. And I think that's a great thing to achieve with people. 
Okay, I think we want the head a bit more distinct. I'm going to put some extra wax there. Okay, I've got the power there. The tail's all gone fuzzy and it's going to be splashing about um, with bubbles and things in the water. Right, now, the more difficult part of the job is to use the white wax crayon or a candle like traditionally is used with watercolour um, paintings. I'm going to use the side a bit more and I'm going to create some light bits swirling in the pool. Now, because it's white, we can't see it. <laughs> so you may, when you start using this, you might think, oh dear, I didn't mean it to look like that. But it does take a bit of practice, which is quite nice when you start achieving. Now, what I think I'm going to do a bit more frothiness around this tail as it's frothing out to the top of the picture I'm just going to strengthen one or two of the circular bits another thing with the white you can't see how strong it's going to be you can hold it up to the light and it will reflect the light and you will be able to see it shining on the paper there is that that you can do. Okay then, I'm, I don't know if you noticed, I was craning beyond that bit there. So we'll be cropping part of the ripple. Okay, so let's get mixing the colours. Now, I'm going to use a Viridian Green and an Ultramarine Blue. I'm going to mix them very powerful. And so let's just start mixing. I've got two of my uh, Pro Art Polar White Nylon brushes that I love to use. These are tips are worn off them. <laughs> so obviously they're great for mixing washes. I've got plenty of room here to make a good amount of wash. Um, always make sure you've got plenty of paint. This is one of the main reasons people... Um, don't achieve what they want with watercolours because they've not made enough paint. You can always put your paint in a jam jar if you need to, mix a lot and then store it with a lid on because you will use it again. And so that, that's another way to give you confidence when you're using watercolour. If you feel like you know it's going to be okay, I'm sure you paint so much better. Okay, I'm just going to try on a bit of scrap computer paper first to see how the intensity of the colour is. I think I'm going to need it quite stronger than that. And today I am going to wet the paper, then I'm going to introduce <clears throat> the colour straight away. Whereas in the last two videos, I let the um, first wash dry completely before I showed you how to apply the paint. So let's see, I think we're going to have it a bit stronger still. Another good um, colour you might like to try with this is Thalo um, Turquoise. That is incredibly, it's got a really strong character. It'd be great for um, tropical seas. But as you know, with some of these um, really strong blues and greens that you can get, if you try them in the English landscape, they can take a little bit of handling. You've got to know how to mix them to make them look more natural. So here's the ultramarine. Let's see. I hope it doesn't look too black on your screen. I'm, I'm working in daylight in front of me and daylight bulbs behind me. So I'm hoping everything's um, clear to you. Okay. A bit stronger. Ooh. Don't be afraid. I know um, with watercolour, it is the English tradition. It has been for centuries to do it delicate. I understand that and I understand how it influences people. But watercolour is just a fabulous medium and it's great just to use it in a way that suits your creativity. OK, I'm going to test these on a piece of watercolour paper first. I think that's quite fun with that. That will dry 20 to 30% lighter with these dark colours. 
20 to 30 percent it can be that much lighter I'm sometimes painting and I think that's beautiful and <laughs> you think oh you come back and it, it's lost its sparkle and I often think it's a bit like when you wet a pebble on the beach you know it, it's a bit akin to that sort of feeling that you have so it's a bit of practice just to get to know and have the faith to put your watercolour on nice and powerful walk away let it dry and and um come back sit when it's dry rather than dabbing it off i know it's so easy for learners to kind of dab away and take it off again so i'm going to wet all the way around with just clean water okay can you see the droplets of water where the wax has been you won't get a lot of ink running this time but it's useful for these nice little bits of detail here and it shows your drawing okay ha oh, ha right here's the fun <laughs> notice i'm going all the way to the edge of my uh, square okay so let's swirl oh now just looking at this one i did that in bits like that i was thinking of um the weeds under the water so we've got the swirls going round and then I'm just going to do a bit of a diagonal layer of paint oh look at this what fun you put some this is nice using two brushes because you, you've got them both loaded up in colour oh wow orange and blue how beautiful now I understand that you may want to control it a bit more but sometimes you've just got to let it go let look at this bit here swirling around and with this technique if you do get a few cauliflowers it may sit in well with the character of what you're doing so if you think it looks okay leave it that's what they say if it looks right it is right now there's a tremendous amount of wet on there you notice there's some beads of colour that have sat on top of the wax that's fine if you feel you want to lift it off just get your brush lift it off in some cases it's nice to leave some for texture notice how the finer bits where my, I've not pressed so hard on the wax but that could be under the water you see okay <clears throat> I'm going to leave this to dry now and I'll be back later. The paint has dried out now, so I'm just going to offer up the mount. And you can see where the white wax has left a broken textured line, which is the ripples in the pool. So I'm going to show you a couple more examples of what we've worked on in the past. That one in more of a landscape format. There we go, another bright one where we've actually got a little circle in the middle. So it's rather nice to allow for all these differences. Like I say, don't be too strict on yourself. And then we've got this example. So there's another one with a lot of splashing about around the tail. Concentric circles again, slightly off centre, that's fine. And then here's more of a subtle one for you to look at. With a fish swimming down the other way. <laughs> 